In the middle of the day, in the Saharan desert, the air and the sand can reach up to 60 degrees Celsius. This is so hot that most insects living on the surface will die. If the insects don't burrow into the sand, reaching the cooler layers away from the surface, they will bake to death in the heat, and they'll get burned by the sand scorching their tiny bodies. But surprisingly, it's around this time that the Saharan silver ants will poke out from their underground nests to make daring excursions out onto the hot sand. The purpose of their expeditions are to find the cooked corpses of other insects, which will then get dragged back to the nest and consumed for food. Now, there are two immediate obstacles that face the silver ants. First is the heat. Obviously, they're affected by it just like anything else. You know, the silver ants aren't immune to heat, so they have to make their exploratory missions quick. Second is the relatively low density of their food. The desert has low biodiversity and low biodensity, so actually finding a dead bug to drag back home can be a challenge in and of itself. These two obstacles, the heat and the rarity of food, mean that the silver ant is under immense selective pressure for speed. They have to dart out and look around as much as they can, and if they find anything, they have to drag it back home as quickly as possible, lest they fall to the same heat death that killed their food. The silver ants have evolved to be so fast, actually, that they are the third fastest animal species on the planet, proportional to their body size. The two faster species are the California coastal mite and the Australian tiger beetle. All right, now scientists have known for a long time that these Saharan silver ants are fast. I mean, you just have to look at them running around for a few seconds and you'll realize, holy crap, those guys are really fast. But until recently, we didn't know exactly how fast or how this speed is possible for them. Harold Wolf, an arthropod neurobiologist at Ulm University in Germany, co-authored a new paper about these silver ants, examining how exactly they can move so quickly. Wolf said, quote, the stride is real special, unquote, which is a reference to the stride or the leg movements of the ants. Wolf observed that they take up to 47 strides per second, and when they take a stride, the foremost leg on one side and the rear two legs on the other side all take a step forward. Then the opposite limbs take a step, and so on, back and forth. Wolf and his colleagues think that this movement pattern helps to distribute the insect's weight so that they don't slip or sink into the sand. Now, to shoehorn this into a human context, uh, and I mean, it's, it's not perfectly analogous because we're talking about hexapods and humans are bipeds. You know, we stand upright while their bodies are more horizontal along the ground, so it's not exactly analogous. But again, to shoehorn this into a human context, it would be analogous to an average-sized human running at about 680 kilometers, or more than 420 miles per hour. To put it another way, this is kind of like running a mile in nine seconds. Basically, if you could run proportionately as fast as these Saharan silver ants, you would run way faster than any sports car. You'd begin to rival the speed of some commercial airplanes. So this was a cool little study, and I wanted to share it with you because I think it's a wonderful example of how evolutionary pressures shape organisms into their habitat, into their ecological niche. Even in extreme habitats, like the barren desert under the scorching heat of the midday Saharan sun, life finds a way. Yeah.